never makes for a delightful fan experience. So let's hope it dies down. Madison with her first goal, excuse me, her second goal of the year. I do apologize. But she is a player that's expected to score goals, assist goals. She's an explosive player that that plays on the wing, can play in the middle, and just has a different level, a different gear, as Jim Millender puts it. She sure does. Anytime they can get her into space, anytime they can isolate her one-on-one, -on -one, it's advantage USF. Last year, Makaya Madison, four goals and 11 assists. 2017, five goals and just one assist. And in her freshman year, just two assists. I mean, looking at those stats, you wouldn't think that out of a forward to have, have more assists than goals. And maybe that spurs Jim Millinder to say, be a little bit more selfish. Go for goal more often. But regardless, those stats are impressive. All the way back to Amanda Roy, playing the ball into the center forward channel, looking for Alexis Vera, and cleared away. And Marlowe doing a great job at anticipating that ball into the center forward, intercepting it, and clearing it away. It's probably going to be a little bit more direct from Riverside, playing two strikers up top today. And that's typically what you see out of a more physical team, isn't it, Charles? They do play a little bit more direct and then try to get in and around the box and create havoc. Free kick here for the Highlanders. Going to be taken by Amanda Roy. Just 10 minutes gone here at Negoesco Stadium. Defensive line is going to hold at the 18. Olivia Camera comes out to punch. She is the West Coast Conference Player of the Week. And that's what you get when you keep clean sheets two games in a row. Or am I, is it three games in a row? <laughs> anyway, uh, well-deserved and congratulations to Olivia. Yeah, two games in a row, a win against San Diego State and a win against Illinois last weekend. A 1-0 victory at San Diego State. Sydney Cooper with the goal. And a victory against Illinois. 3-0 in that match. Illinois, good opponent. They beat Pepperdine earlier in the year by three to by scoreline of 3-2. So Pepperdine, usually a perennial favorite in this conference. Tim Ward and his side will be down here later in the year for what will be a crucial West Coast Conference crunch match. But again, we talk about this year after year, and this is one of the most talented teams, this USF Dons side that Jim Millender has ever had now in his eighth year. Again, the statistic goes on. This USF women's side has never been to the NCAA tournament, and that's what Jim Millender was brought here to do and you never know. It could be this season. It, it could be, and Jim Millinder will be the first to tell you that it's n talent only goes so far. Unless they have the continuity and the rhythm as, as a team, which they're building here early in the season, you know that talent goes goes for naught. So they're really going to try to build something here. They ha definitely have the talent from the back, through the midfield, and definitely up front. Let's see if they can put it all together. And it, like we said at the beginning of the broadcast bring consistency to this season. Helene, he's settling the ball down. Long ball for Samantha Jennings. According to Jim Millinder, she's the fittest that she's ever been in a USF Don shirt. And Samantha Jennings did exactly what she's supposed to do in that situation. She's supposed to flick the ball on. Next time, Makaya Madison's get on the, you know, it's gonna try to get on the end of that. Here's Kalena Teufel. Again, a diagonal for Micaiah Madison. It's a great ball. Madison looks up first time. It's Samantha Jennings! San Francisco 2, UC Riverside nil. And if I'm the coach of USF, Jim Millinder, I'm going to say put those balls through either direction for Micaiah Madison. There is no stopping her. 
Samantha Jennings and Micaiah Madison have a combination that is uncanny. They are really, really a dynamic pair up front for USF. And here in the opening 12 minutes of the game, San Francisco with a 2-0 lead. Jim Millender said, I think it's going to be a little tight in this game. Riverside having a more, excuse me, a little bit of a difficult time kind of getting their legs in this early going. Here's Samantha Jennings. Is there more? Makaya Madison. Still Makaya Madison again! San Francisco three. You see Riverside nil. Jennings to Madison for her second of the night. Back to back goals for San Francisco. And they lead now 3-0 in the first 13 minutes of the game. And that's exactly what USF is trying to do. They're trying to get that momentum and that combination play together, constantly getting better. And they are certainly doing it here early in the match tonight. McIntyre just took a seat on the bench here and crosses his arms. Not happy with his team's performance here in this early going. And right off of the kickoff, from conceding, Riverside concede again. How, how, how close were those goals to each other? Within a minute, within two? I think not even, I mean, yeah, I think probably around 45 seconds, and so. Well, that was as, as electrifying as a hair dryer in a bathtub. Wow. That's quite the metaphor, Joe. <laughs> Matt is saying they want to learn from every game and limit the mistakes. He says they'll be fine, though, once they get into the conference. But this opening 13 minutes for Riverside has really been rough. This is Helen Ehi, and now Madison again. Away by Watson. This is Liz Chua. And now Tamayo, left back. And a little bit of a collision there. And that's Shania that, Dinza, and it's a free kick. Sorry, Charles. And that's exactly what USF needs to improve on, is out of the back. They need to really be more conscientious of their spacing and how you build out of the back. Take a little bit of a risk there, which needs to be improved if they're going to be more consistent on defense. Ball served in, and Akari Shimizu gets her head to it. Brought down by Teufel at the end line here, and cleared all the way down the field. So too, though, is Natsa Marin. And you can hear Jim Millinder not letting down at all. He really wants to develop this rhythm. It's not about the opponent. It's really about what USF can do to become a better team. This is nice combination play here. It's Shimizu served in. And there is Olivia Camera. San Francisco has not scored in the first 15 minutes of any game so far this year in their three and one record. They've scored a lot of goals in the 15 through 30 minute mark. If you want to get real statistical here, this is from Matt Fontenot, who is the sports information director. But well, well, it's interesting yeah. because coaches look at that and they look at patterns of play. They look at how teams do, and that's a sign of, it can be a sign of, of fitness and uh, or lack thereof. This is a nice cross field ball here by Hallie Watson. On for Kalena Teufel. That's really nice stuff. It's Kalena Teufel! And palmed over the bar by Kayla Cayo could have been four. That was a fantastic strike, and the most important thing that she did was put it on target. She challenged the goalkeeper to make a save, and sure enough, the Riverside goalkeeper made a very nice save, parried it away for a corner kick for USF. 
good start here for San Francisco. Almost a dream start. Here's Keely Roy. The goalkeeper comes out to punch it. Kayla Kayo chasing it down here is Sh Shania Dinza. And she's upended there. It'll be a free kick going at Riverside's way, but seems like everything is going towards the Riverside goal, Joe. Absolutely. At the moment, it sure is. Very, very early still. Let's see if these, this rhythm of play for USF can continue. Or will Riverside knock on the door as they are here, trying to penetrate that final third? Question is, for Riverside, can they get in front of the goal? They're out wide. They're getting into that defense th third for USF, their own offensive third. But can they get in front of goal and have a goal-scoring opportunity? Yeah, they haven't quite turned in a move to be able to make that happen. But they're starting to link up some passes here. This is Alyssa Carranza, dispossessed. And now, Natsa Marin. Dispossessed Liz Chua. Here's Samantha Jennings. She has Kalena Teufel. That's good defending there by Aliyah Feliciano, Ooh, the freshman. Really nice buildup. I think Samantha Jennings will tell you that she just hit that ball a little bit too light for Teufel's speed. Teufel's got a lot of speed. Could have been a little bit further beyond the defender. Free kick here for San Francisco. 3-0 for San Francisco as well. Two for Makaya Madison. She's now tied with Samantha Jennings with, with the most amount of goals on, on this San Francisco team. Those two are racking up the statistics. And here we go for Riverside. Here's Alexis Vera, the captain, and the offside flag raised. And that is a rule I can still not get used to is they have an offside 10 yards, 12 yards before they touch the ball, but they wait for the player to touch the ball to call it offside. It's just kind of a awkward situation and sometimes leads to injuries. Here is Watson looking for Makaya Madison. It's a fine ball down the right side here. And it'll be a San Francisco throw in just in front of the home fans. A bit quiet tonight just because of the weather and but if they saw this opening 15 minutes and it was a packed house they would be smiling and cheering and here is Vera, shouts of a handball, not given, and it's a, then given. A little, little quiet, but a decent crowd. Decent crowd, and it continues to fill in, so nice to see people come out on a, on a weeknight and support local Division One soccer. Absolutely right here, Neguesco Stadium. Named, of course, after legendary coach Steve Neguesco, who recently passed away in the springtime, excuse me, the fall. Correct. I do apologize. Yeah, it was last October. And uh, happened to be your coach, Joe. He was uh, my coach, and later in life, a very good friend. A mentor to many, and uh, an idol to many. Here is Vera with the shot on the turn. And Negoesco's legacy lives on here. Five national championships on the men's side. Six. I always I, 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 take it away. But. Well, well, I say six because he, he played in one and then won five as a coach. But yes, as you said, one was um, taken away by the NCAA. Here's Candace Hillegas. She keeps the ball in play here. Headed away by Liz Chua. Throw in for San Francisco. Couple substitutions for Riverside. For me, I'd really like to see Keely Roy get more involved in this game. She's a fantastic player. For those of you watching at home, number two on the USF Dons playing in the uh, attacking central midfield position. Highly recruited player out of Santa Rosa or Sebastopol, California. And she is a dynamic player, but uh, to me, she has not gotten the ball enough. I think the midfield and the fullbacks could look for her more, target her more, 
and then look for her to find Makaya Madison or Samantha Jennings or Toifel out there on the left. Well, I don't think the conditions have been totally right for her either, with the wind kind of whipping in, ball into the area. Hilligas tries to clear away. Marie Marlowe looks to clear, and Olivia Camera again, the goalkeeper right there. Camera. there was some points where she wasn't going to be the number one goalkeeper, and then she solidified her place, the senior, from Virginia Beach. And I think she's doing the right thing there, finding her wide pullbacks. But uh, unfortunately for USF Dons, ball was not controlled before it went out of bounds. A couple of substitutions now. Looks like Jaden Tamayo off. And Nicole Kelsey gets her first minutes at right back. And she brings in a lot of experience playing the uh, last couple of years in that same right back position for the Dons. Looks like Hilligas has moved over to play left back as well. And a substitution here as well for Riverside. Rihanna Saldana in the match as well, playing up top as a striker. Here's Madison. I believe the May have been a little bit of a push there. Fans did not like that at all. No, they didn't, but it's nice to see that they've woken up and they're in the game. Not saying they were asleep before, but <laughs> got their blood boiling. <laughs> Alyssa Carranza fouled, and a restart here for Riverside. 0-3 on the year. They lost to Bakersfield, their bitter rival last weekend with five minutes to go in that game. Ouch. A very, very tough loss for them, but they're gonna go through those tough losses, those bitter losses as a young team to kind of get that out of their system. And I kind of pressed Nat Gonzalez on that. And, you know, he said, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but he said it with a smile. So <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he's, a, he's a guy that, that, that knows how to train teams and they finished well last year, Riverside. It's very much a, a younger team, though, as, as he had mentioned multiple times, and they're going to learn from every game. And you can't coach experience, is what he said. So they're going to get this experience this year, especially in this beginning part of the season. Well, well, I like that because, you know, it takes courage for a coach to play younger players, recruit younger players. Like you said earlier, he only has four, four or five seniors on the team. I'm not sure if all those seniors are even playing. So I, I think... Uh, future is bright for Riverside. All the way back to the goalkeeper, Kayo. Distributes to Marin. There's a little bit of a press from San Francisco. Brought down by Vera. Held on by Chua. And at the end of the day, you know, everyone getting better is better for the game. It's better for each opponent. To play higher quality teams is exactly why you play college sports. You want to play against some of the best. That was a big big thing for Steve Nagoesco is to make everyone better, not just his own team. And I think over the years, he definitely improved the game in the United States. Yeah. He, I should say he helped improve the game. Just around 20 minutes to go here in this first half. We played 25, San Francisco 3, UC Riverside nil. And speaking of Steve Nagoesco, one of the things that he was known so well for was recruiting players from around the world. and his memorial, um, Eric Visser, who was the head coach here, said, I think that the world could look a lot more like a like a world league team. And I thought that was very poignant and special. And just touching about what you were saying there about recruiting and coaching and making everybody better. I think it's important to remember, especially in today's times, very where, where not everybody is getting along. Well, That's and, and Steve uh, and other coaches are great at, at Good coaches become great at managing players. And a lot of times at the higher levels, it's not all about what you know in terms of X's and O's and strategy and technique. It's about managing the personalities of the team. Throw and that, and that, excuse me, that is something that Steve did extraordinarily well with, with players from around the world. 
Two substitutions on the sideline here for San Francisco. Sidney Cooper and Izzy Lucan going to make their way in just a moment. Referee stopping the game here for, for a second. It'll be a throw in here to Riverside on the far side. No pun or rhyme intended with any of that. With that being said, clock stopped on 1907 here in the stadium. Charles Wolin and Joe Dugan with you. The home side with a 3 0 lead. Makaya Madison with a brace so far tonight. San Francisco scoring three goals in the opening 15 minutes as the shot fizzes in from distance there for Riverside. And here come the substitutions. So Izzy Lucan will take the place of Kalena Teufel, and Sidney Cooper will play up top. Cooper, who was knocking on the doorstep every single time uh, uh, last year. She probably thought it was Halloween. She, she was knocking on so many doors, uh, but, but not getting her reward. But so far, two goals on, on her plate this year. One, a penalty, and so she's kind of opened her account. And last year, we had a lot of fun calling uh, her action because we were her two biggest fans, hoping that she would break uh, break the barrier of that first goal. That didn't happen till this year, but good for her. She's a very hard worker, and each and every time she comes into the game, at least last year, she has an immediate effect on the game in a positive way. She really gets forward quite quickly. And she's skilled, too, on the ball. She doesn't lose possession a lot. Very smart, intelligent player, able to work herself in spaces, distribute to her teammates, and be able to be found uh, at the end of the day. Well, what I particularly like about her is she can play with her back to the goal, or she can go straight on for the goal with the ball at her feet and attack, attack the defenders. Cleared away there by Watson. As Riverside looks to switch the field. This is better play here from Riverside. Well, what I like about Riverside is they're trying to play. Yes, they're down 3-0. They have not given up hope. They're still going to play the way they want to play and the way they eventually want to build out of the back through the midfield. You can tell they're trying to do the right things. So far, they're coming up short. Beth Ann Perry now in the match here. The sophomore will take the place of Cassidy Helenihi. And for Beth Ann Perry, she's a player that was in and out of this central midfield three. And... She'll be given quite a few minutes here, but she's got to compete with the likes of the Keely Roys and Cassidy George and Helen Ehe. Ball swerved in here, headed away. Top of the area, though. Still on here. As the cross was closed down there by Hallie Watson and Shania Dinza bearing down on goal the sophomore. And here come a UC Riverside rear guard here for a corner. They've sent everybody up except for two. Can they get one from this? The likes of Roy and Natsa Marin are in there, as well as Lee Polson, chested away at the first post here by Marie Marlowe, and back on. San Francisco clear their lines. Cassidy George trying to do so. Finally cleared away. You can see USF back line has really improved as the game's gone on. You can see their line of defense is a good 40 yards out. And they are right on those forwards when those balls come in to the Riverside forwards, not allowing them to penetrate anything further so far than about 40 yards away from goal. That's really good defense. Substitution for Riverside. Number 20, Maria Gallardo for number nine. Just around 15 minutes to go here. A couple of other substitutions for Riverside. Alec uh, Alexandra Hargrave now in the match, who actually scored a goal for Riverside last week. Only two goal scorers for Riverside. Two goals in their first three matches. And Alexandra Hargrave, one of those goal scorers. The freshman getting some minutes here. Ball over the top here by Amanda Roy. Looking for Brianna Saldana. And substitutions coming for San Francisco as well. Makaya Madison will take a break. 
We'll see the changes on the field now. Samantha Kerwood Wagner in the game, also a very exciting attacking player. And Michelle Feinberg. Shot comes in from distance and it is wide. And Akari Shimizu with that shot. She punches the air, Shimizu. And that was a right decision that she made. She released the ball very quickly. She had a very good angle right in the middle of the park. A bit of a distance, but she had it go a little bit off to the left. Yeah, and I've been impressed by Shimizu so far. She likes to control throughout central midfield, the attacking midfielder. A sophomore from Kailua Kona, Hawaii. Here's Nicole Kelsey. She wins a throw. Now Watson taking her time. Looking to find Kerwood Wagner. It's a second header. Cassidy George helps her out. Trying to win back possession. Beth Ann Perry's first touches. Looking for Feinberg. Controlled here by Riverside. Nicely done by the Highlanders. Amanda Roy ball over the top. Seems like she really likes to distribute from out of the back. And here comes Maria Gallardo. Plays really sporadic right now. No one really has a flow, not connecting a lot of passes. Let's see if either team can get into a rhythm, connect more passes, and try to play through midfield as they progress up the field. Good work, this. Hard rave. Good diagonal on here. It's Gallardo. But first, it is Olivia Camera. West Coast Conference Player of the Week. And she had to be right on her toes to get that ball before the Riverside forward, just in the nick of time. Sydney Cooper, play on, says the referee. Still Sydney Cooper. She finds Kerwood Wagner. Sydney Cooper again. And it's just wide. Save made by Kayla Cayo. And the referee here is going to do, I think, the appropriate thing. Cooper was. Held back, she fought through it, and had the advantage, but the referee is giving a yellow card for that exact play way back here near midfield. And, you know, the defender's quite lucky, to be honest. Had Cooper gone down as the last man, that's an automatic, no, dis no decision but a red card. Which we don't like to see, but that is the rules. <laughs> I had to throw in my referee. Yeah. Once again, once my again. broadcast partner always talking about refereeing decisions, but well, it's good that, that you've that, kept the cards in your pocket tonight. But that was complimentary. <laughs> that was complimentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me going the other way. Yeah, and he gave that yellow card after the play because why? They had Sydney go. Cooper had the advantage. She had the ball going towards goal. She was behind the defender. All the advantage was to USF. It would have been against USF's advantage had they called the, the play dead. Exactly. So that's why it's always given after the fact because of the advantage, especially even if USF scored on that build up there. Right. Here is Saldana. Here's Luka now. Akari Shimizu. Good work this by Shania Dinsa. Comes out here, the strike from just outside the area by Neda Martinez, and it's over the bar. And you can see the, the discontinuity of the back four going for balls way up the field when there's only 11 minutes left. The back four for USF needs to sit in a little bit, be a little bit more patient, not allow those through balls. And 
Mariah Diaz now in the game at the left back position for San Francisco. Jim Millender has pretty much changed every player on, on the field except for the goalkeeper and the center back pairing and his holding midfield player, Cassidy George. And and, and same goes for Nat Gonzalez on his side too. Almost the same except his, his back line has been unchanged. And the goalkeeper, of course. It's a good opportunity for USF when they're up by three goals in the first half to get yeah. a lot of playing time for the younger players or less experienced players, but also to give those starters, uh, just as importantly, to give those starters a break. Before the game, Jim Millinder, as we mentioned earlier, was very conscientious of the minutes played by some of his starters, and especially Samantha Jennings, who has had two knee injuries. It's all about managing her time and making sure that she's fresh. Chested down here by Neda Martinez. Cleared away by the captain, Amanda Roy, the senior. Here's Jennifer Barroso. She does well. Still Jennifer Barroso, upended. And Michelle Feinberg with some good tackling there. And San Francisco just keen to play out of the back and taking their time. Cleared away as Izzy Lucan comes in. And a free kick here against San Francisco. Izzy Lucan coming in strong right on the heels of Brianna Saldana. Who, mind you, probably has a bit of a knock on the top of her instep. I was going to say, if they call that a foul, I don't think we'd be al allowed to play back in back in the day. <laughs> that wasn't a very dangerous tackle. I think it was a legal tackle. She didn't have her cleats up or didn't go over the ball. And I think she actually got to the ball before Riverside, but referee was there and he called it a foul. Just around eight minutes, 24 seconds to go. Riverside with a throw in, trying to get something going. The, the assistant referee kind of raised his flag. That was interesting, wasn't it? I wasn't sure what that was. I don't think he was either. Ball over the top, Watson headed away. And then finally cleared away for another Highlander throw in. But this is valuable experience for the USF Dons. Really right now, they're discombobulated in the back. Jim Millinder's letting them play through it and encouraging them to do better. Another throw in, goes over everyone's head, and Watson again right there, collected by Marie Marlowe. Out for a San Francisco throw in front of the old beer garden, which I'm not sure it doesn't exist anymore. It does not because they are selling alcoholic beverages or adult beverages behind the concession <laughs> stands on the stands side of the pitch. Here is Izzy Lucan. Lucan, the senior. And in her first, one of her first games scoring, excuse me, I think it was her sophomore year, but scoring a game-winning goal against California. Might have been her freshman, I remember that. That was a very exciting time. It was a very exciting time for her, but a uh, very much a two-way player, can play as a left back, or play as a, Left winger, loves to get up and down the line from Folsom, California. Her parents are always here. Her family always is watching from Phoenix, Arizona, and those suburbs. I'm always told by the parents to, to shout them out because I know that they're always watching. Well, she's always been one of my favorite players. She's a very dynamic player. I remember her freshman year she came in. Uh, she was a forward by by nature, but she had, uh, the team needed her at left back and she did a fantastic job and I believe it was her freshman year that she did get a goal and a game winning goal. Chested on, here's Marie Marlowe and that's some smart play here by the center back. But as she realizes she doesn't have her goalkeeper on there, she turns away from the pressure and wins herself a throw. And that's, that's the key. Division one, the speed of play is much faster than these 
you know, youth soccer players are used to. It's really the decision making that needs to speed up. She had the opportunity to play the goalkeeper for whatever reason. She didn't make that early decision and then it was off. And if it's not done within a second or two, certainly in that position, it is not something you want to do. Liz Chua now off. And Jessica Tamayo now in the match. Here's Beth Ann Perry looking to switch the field to play Kerwood Wagner. Here's Nicole Kelsey, chested down here by Watson. She's been all over the place, Hallie Watson, in this first half, a center back. You notice lately when USF gets the ball into their middle third, into their midfield, they're in a race to get to the front. They need to calm down, play a little bit more wide before they go forward, contain, you know, possess the ball as they progressively go up the field. Chested on, and Olivia Camera is right there to make the save. Fantastic save. Jennifer Barroso, right at the doorstep, but right to Olivia Camera. If we had a Jumbotron, I'd love to show that again. <laughs> <laughs> George for Cooper. Cole Kelsey for Cooper, looking for Beth Ann Perry and then cleared away. Here is Mimri Marlowe, the sophomore tasked with such a big role of playing center back, almost like a sweeper type of role here after playing really well at left back last season. And while she's not the most experienced center back, she does have a lot of speed, which makes up for any mistakes that may happen back there. So Jim Millinder feels very comfortable with Marie Marlowe. This is Izzy Lucan, runs into a Riverside player who fouls her and a free kick for San Francisco. Just a little bit of breathing room now in this last couple of minutes before the end of the first half. Looks like Izzy Lucan will swing this to the back post. Two in the wall, Lucan in the area. Into the area, rather. Here's Nicole Kelsey. She settles and plays Marlowe, who then in turn looking to switch the field. Kept in here by Kerwood Wagner. Now Beth Ann Perry lays back off here for Easy Lucan. Lucan crosses the ball in. Wins the first corner for San Francisco in the first half with two minutes and 30 seconds to go. That was a really nice buildup by USF. You'd like to see them again do that more often, playing through the central midfield out wide and trying to get those crosses in really confuses and puts the uh, defense on their back heels. Cooper to take. Cooper back post. Izzy Lucan was there and headed away. It'll be another corner. And Lucan. Took a bit of a spill, and she's slow to get back up on her feet, and she does. The referee's going to stop the game for a second as the trainer runs out there with two minutes and five seconds on the clock. And I believe Lucan needs to come out of the game for a few minutes here for a concussion protocol, which is important. And the referees have really been, a, you know, trained really well on this. Anytime there is a head or potential head injury, they stop the game right away. And like you said, take the player off the field, make sure they're okay. Two minutes left here in this first half. Izzy Lucan taking a seat on the bench. Sydney Cooper into the area. Cassidy George was at the back post. As UC Riverside looks to clear. Really, really good corner 
by Cooper, putting the ball where the goalkeeper could not get it and put it in front of a goal, the goal for an opportunity for her teammates to come on and potentially head the ball in. Unfortunately, they didn't get on the end of it, but again, very dangerous corner kick. It's Nicole Kelsey. And now Cassidy George attempts to win back possession here. A minute and 20 to go in the first half. Long ball by Natsa Marin. Chested down by Marlowe. And she'll look to clear. The wind really whipping in here. Three goals in the opening 15 minutes for San Francisco. Two of them scored by Micaiah Madison, the other by Samantha Jennings. Four goals on the year for Jennings, three on the year for Madison. And Madison with another assist to her strike partner, Jennings. And so an opening flurry and the third goal scored right after the second goal within 30 seconds or so. And so San Francisco very much in the driver's seat, comfortable here in this first half, but it's been a good showing. Lots of changes from both sides, but there we sit here at halftime. San Francisco three, UC Riverside nil at halftime in this non-conference matchup between the two sides. We'll be back with the second half and my co-commentator Joe Dugan will chat with coach Jim Millinder and hear his thoughts of the first half in just a little bit. We'll see you in a bit. Cheers.
Welcome back to Negawesco Stadium. My broadcast partner, Joe Dugan, chatted with Coach Jim Millinder at the half. Here's what Coach Jim Millinder had to say. I'm here with Coach Jim Millinder. Thoughts on the first half? Yeah, I mean, we jumped on them early, and sometimes that's uh, that's a kind of a sin to do that, you know, because we got real complacent. I thought they did a really good job of pressing us and keeping us in, and um, we had two or three really good moments, and we scored goals, and we've got to get back to that, you know. Um, the message at halftime, to be honest with you, Joe, is that we got to go out and play harder. They outplayed us in the first half. I thought they just played harder than we do, and, you know, you can talk about a lot of things during the course of the game, but playing hard solves a lot of problems. You know what I mean? Your first of all is your first in knockdowns. You can take up better positions. So we've just got to come out and play better the second half, I think. Right. Okay, good luck in the second half, Jim. Thanks, Joe. And back to you, Charles, in the booth. Welcome to the second wow. half here at Negoesco Stadium. Just around 45 seconds elapsed during that as the Highlanders win a throw in San Francisco clears top of the area. And Marie Marlowe does to Samantha Jennings, but good press here. This is Chua. And a foul on, excuse me, a foul and Lee Polson goes to ground and a free kick here for the Highlanders, starting well in this opening minute and a half. And Jim Miller was very well aware of Lee Polson. She's got a lot of pace there on the left side for Riverside. Dangerous player. Off of the free kick, Natsa Marin and collected by camera. Again, Lee Polson, one of only two players that scored a goal for Riverside so far this year in their second match. Those ones with the bottle opener on it. I want one of those. Against California Baptist. Yeah, one of those. Find me one. I'll pay you. I'll pay you for some of it. Free kick going San Francisco's way with a 3 nil lead here as the second half is kicked off. And as you heard from the interview at halftime with Jim Millinder, he was just imploring his team to really play harder. He didn't think they were coming to the ball first, getting to the ball first. He thought Riverside was as much into the game as they were. And you wouldn't know it by the score. Get two for Jennings, one for Madison, excuse me, two for Madison, one for Jennings. And an assist for, for Madison. Each. Yeah. Those two are at least going to have 10 to 15 goals apiece this season, if, if not more, and a, and a few assists as well. It will really kick the Dons on. Here's Helen Nehi, who switches the field very nicely. Makaya Madison now on the left side. Madison trying her luck here against Liz Chua. Really like that switch of the play by USF. Again, exploiting the space, particularly on the width with Makaya Madison. Cleared away here by Alia Feliciano. One back here by Marie Marlowe and Co. Helen Ehi looking for Madison. On here for Keeley Roy. Roy, and now Jennings on for Madison. Neat touch there. Madison into the area. It is Makaya Madison, and the goalkeeper does very well. Kayla Kayo. She sure did. Very good build-up combination play amongst three players by USF. Makaya Madison takes it almost to the byline and tries to pull it back, just didn't pull it back far enough. Goalkeeper, as you said, Charles, did very well to grab and snatch that cross before a USF Dons player, Samantha Jennings, could get to it. Still windy here at Negoesco Stadium. Feels like it's around 45 degrees, but it's probably just 55. <laughs> but we've got our jackets on here upstairs in our bird's eye view. The, the uh, I don't know what we call it here, but... Um, the Sky Lounge. I usually call it the flight deck. Um, <laughs> but the Sky Lounge works too, Joe. Um, wonder where you got that from. <laughs> As Riverside... The Highlanders, a shot comes in from distance. Again, doesn't get all the way through here. And bouncing around as Tamayo looks to clear. Kept in though. 
And could have been a corner there, but goal kick here for San Francisco. And again, both, I'm sure both coaches at halftime were imploring their teams to have more consistency, connect more passes and develop, develop a rhythm because at the end of the first half and now to the start of the second half, neither team, in my opinion, has developed a rhythm. And Riverside is is every bit physical as we heard they were going to be. They're, they're not going away. They're challenging for every ball, whether it's in the air or on the ground. They're really putting a fight up here. It's been a good opening six minutes for them here in this second half, especially after a bit of the debacle and conceding within the first minute of the game. Well, they certainly came out the second half with the press. And you're right. They really want to get on top of USF not allowing them, USF, to develop a rhythm. Because once USF gets in a rhythm and they start finding Micaiah Madison and Samantha Jennings, they were a powerful duo up front. And again, for Nat Gonzalez's team, it's about getting experience. He's saying you can't teach experience. They are young, and they're going to learn every game. Switch of the field here by Helen Ehe again to Madison. Taken well here. She's got two to her name so far. Crowd wants a foul by Alyssa Kranza. Here's Jaden Tamayo, her cross. Really good looking cross by Tamayo. Brought back here by Jennings. It's a nice run. On for Micaiah Madison. Dribbling in space. He's got three, got four. Nice ball here for Kalena Teufel. They call her KK. Lays off. The cross here by Candice Hilligus, top of the area. Better spell this for the Dons. And now on for Keely Roy with the shot. And Keely Roy to Kayla Kayo. It's interesting how USF really was spreading the ball out from left to right, using the flanks quite extensively. There at the end of the play, play got very narrow, and they lacked the width. Width creates space amongst the defense. And uh, you look for those gaps, you look for those gaps in the defense, and then you look for players like Samantha Jennings and others to slot through those, those gaps, get shots off. Here's Madison. And now George on for Jennings. Settled here by Watson, who has been really very much, I think, for me, one of the defensive heroes of this game for San Francisco. Broadcaster's jinx. <laughs> yeah, right there. No, but you're, you're absolutely right. She has a very good knack at reading a play. She doesn't have to do a whole lot athletically because she is reading the play. She's anticipating where the ball is going to be, and nine times out of ten, she gets there before the Riverside attacker. The one thing about the inexperience in the back for the defense of the USF Dons is they're going for tackles at midfield. They don't need to do that. They just need to contain. USF is a more athletic team than Riverside, so they don't need to make those all-or-nothing tackles at midfield and then give away penalties like this. You mean free kicks? It's not a penalty. Excuse me. Yeah. A penalty which results in a free kick, correct? Yes. Thank you for the clarification, Charles. No problem. My partner. Here's Natsa Marin's ball. That one went wayward and headed on by Lee Polson for a goal kick. Eliz uh, Olivia Camera hasn't really been bothered in this game at all. Riverside still waiting for their first clear cut opportunity, except for the header. Uh, actually, let me take that back. Let me walk that back. Late, late, late in the first half, but. Again, hasn't really had much to do. Shania Dinza now. This is Dinza. She's laying off here for Alexis Vera. Another goal kick for San Francisco. The crowd thinking there was a foul there on Riverside. The referee let the play go. Goal kick for USF. I'd like to see USF play out of the back a little bit more than just playing so direct, but 
with these conditions in the wind, maybe it's a little bit more conservative, but maybe a little safer to play a little bit more direct. It's Mikai Madison with her hands kind of outstretched asking for the ball. And kind of chatting with her teammates here, wearing the captain's armband today on her thigh. Mind you. She's got her arms crossed here. Ball swerved in here, headed away. And then eventually cleared away by Keely Roy. Riverside with a good run of play now. This is Shimizu. And now Liz Chua. Again cleared away by Marlowe, who's looking for Jennings. George. Jennings again. Madison keep it in. It's going to be a throw for Riverside. Chua, and it comes off of Jennings. Ten minutes into the second half. 3-0 San Francisco. Headed away by Watson. On for Tamayo. Held in by Chua. Here is Shimizu. Long ball over the top. Very, very direct by Natsa Marin. Now, can USF find the feet like this of midfield, build through the midfield up into the forwards? Looks like they're doing well so far. Here's Teufel. And now Jennings. Throw in on the far side for the Highlanders. And at this point in the first half, they had already conceded three goals. And so much better progress for the away team in this Opening part of the second half, but here comes Micaiah Madison. On her left foot, trying to get down the end line on the right and cleared away by Chua. And Chua did very well to stay low, focus on the ball, not be deceived by any of the moves. Did well to clear that ball away for danger for Riverside. Here is Tamayo. Throw in here for Riverside. Over the head of Marie Marlowe, she misjudges it. This is Alexis Vera, and cleared away by none other than Hallie Watson. An experience will tell Marlowe next time there is no need to try to win that head ball 40 yards away from goal. She needs to step back and keep the ball in front of her. An outside back playing as a center back today. And she's the type of outside back that just loves to get up the field. And so I think that the intention is is probably there. But Absolutely. playing center back, a little bit of a different discipline, if you will, my <laughs> friend. Absolutely. And it is so exciting last year when she was a freshman coming on as a left back. You'd see her go from literally box to box. I mean, quite exciting. But again, she's filling in a role that's absolutely needed with uh, Cat Hill out with injury, filling in for the center back role doing a fine job so far. Anytime you have a clean sheet, you're doing a fine job so far. Here is the substitute, Neda Martinez, in the match now for Chua. Chua doing a good defensive job on Makaya Madison, though. Referee stopping the play, may even give a yellow card here for some dissent. He's having a chat with Micaiah Madison. She's arguing with him. I mean, you have to let the kids play, let the players play. There wasn't much in that. There's no intent there. A few stoppages here in this second half, definitely more than the first. And this is going to be served in by Amanda Roy, the senior, the captain, the center back 
here for Riverside. Can they get one back? Would really do a lot for them. It's a free header at the back post, and it's just to the outside of Camera's post. Just outside. And as you saw that ball going into the box, you saw all the Riverside forwards or players attacking the ball, and a lot of the USF players just standing around. And that's exactly what you teach the players. You teach the players to t attack the ball, don't let the ball attack you. Looked like Riverside wanted it more on that play than USF. Swerved in and over, over the bar there, but that was a nice driven corner. And it was curling towards the back post. If not, the wind probably aided it on to go over cameras post there. A couple of threatening opportunities for the Highlanders. Absolutely, and like I said earlier, they're not going away. They they are not going to give up. They are pressing. They're a well-coached team. They might not have as much talent as USF, but they're not going away. Here's San Francisco on the goal kick. Kind of orchestrated here by a lot of the players. Here's Makaya Madison now. Well won by her. Headed down to herself. Madison on her right. Now to her left. Makaya Madison swerved in. And there's Kalena Teufel. San Francisco four. You see Riverside nil. The route is on. KK, they call her. Kalena Teufel. Absolutely amazing run but my, by Makaya Madison. And that's exactly what she's improved on so much is she went to her left, fake to her right, went to her left, her weaker foot, made a fantastic cross, finding Toefel for the goal. Well, Kalena Toifel, she really likes to take defenders on 1v1. And she's gonna get a lot of assists this year. She already has two and leads the team with two, but that is her first goal on the year in San Francisco. Four for them tonight. An impressive, impressive number in this opening hour, Joe. It sure is, and, and this is the type of play that Jim Millender and his coaching staff are asking the players to, to play and play more consistently more consistently regardless of the score. There is Brianna Saldana looking to chase it down and goes over her head. And, 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 and as you can see there, and back to the Highlanders for just for a second, is not Marin and Amanda Roy are trying to play the balls direct from the back to open up the space for the two strikers, Alexis Vera and Brianna Saldana. Saldana now after the game finishes in the game for Vera, but it is a very, very direct by the two center backs, not trying to play through central midfield. Not at all. And I don't know if we've mentioned this yet, but Lee Polson for Riverside is the sister of David Polson, who plays left back for the USF men's team. So nice to see a, a family member out here. Uh, parents are in, in the stadium, said hi to us uh, earlier. Very talented, athletic family, both brother and sister. And again, Polson, one of the players that's made her name so far for Riverside, a goal to her name so far this year. Here is Cassidy George. Doesn't get that quite right, though, to switch the field here for Kalena Teufel. Once again, USF breaking things up in the back. Well intercepted, anticipated run there in the back. Free kick gonna be called here going the Highlanders way. Again, these two teams, they, they faced each other seven times. San Francisco six wins and one tie. Highlanders yet to defeat San Francisco in the time that they've met. And they met two years ago in Riverside, a goal to nil. Samantha Jennings with that goal in 2017. Collected by Akari Shimizu, a sophomore. Again, she 
wanted the ball to her feet there from Polson, and she raised her hand up into the air, flicked the air up in her hand there, and, and you can tell Shimizu, also one of those players, a good piece in this Highlanders team that's gonna kick on for later. Both her and Polson, both sophomores, so a few years to go yet for them to enjoy their collegiate careers, and I'm sure that this Riverside team will be something as well with them in, in the side here. Here is Shimizu looking for Polson. Just not on the same page over there. Unfortunately for Riverside, not able to connect. There was space out there, but Polson was a little bit higher than where the ball was left off. That's a nice ball by Polson. Here's Saldana and cleared away by Marie Marlowe. Chested down by Roy. Roy out of the back. And she does well. Shimizu on here for Polson. Jim Millinder can hear him from here shouting go, go, go to his central midfield. Right. And having good opportunities to coach as well. Even though his team's up 4-0, gets a chance to, to really get into his players and, and continue to chat with them, even up the, the score line and, and he's managing the game and he's winning the game and the result's not really in doubt at this point, but at the same time, he, he's, he's still always coaching through the 90 minutes, especially because a, a, a big gun in town, Stanford's coming and they wanna be able to, to be right on the day. But what he's doing, he's setting a standard for his players and his team. It's not, again, about who you're playing, it's about how you're playing as your team. And how are you executing executing the game strategy that he, Jim Millinder, has laid out for the team? So he's not going to be satisfied just because of the score. He's going to want to play a little bit higher, more high tempo, connect more passes. So that's what he's imploring his team to do. Roy with the foul on Polson. Free kick here for the Highlanders. Brought down by Carranza. All the way to the back line for Natsa Marin. Marlowe absolutely flattens Saldana going up for that header. Referee says play on. Here's Kalena Teufel who just scored moments ago. Teufel. Looking for the run of Keeley Roy. The freshman in this team, Keely Roy. I mean, in a really, a really simple way, Steve Nigoesco always used to say to us, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd ask, you know, who are you playing next to? Okay, Charles and Joe are playing next to each other. He'd look at us at halftime and say, how many times have you connected passes? Two, three? Well, that's not good enough. It should be six, it should be seven, it should be eight. So asking players to play together more often, put together more passes, connect more, make those players around you better. And that's certainly what Jim Millinder, you can hear him on the sidelines, you can hear him asking his players to keep involved regardless of the score, win each ball, and connect more passes. Just around 23 minutes to go. San Francisco four. UC Riverside nil. It's been a better half for Riverside after succumbing to three goals in the first 13 minutes of the game. Haven't bothered camera too much, but winning a couple of important free kicks, being physical, being in the Don's way. Now here comes Micaiah Madison. Is there more for her and San Francisco? Micaiah Madison still. It's Micaiah Madison and cleared away. And by again, Riverside. Another really good run, and I like where she placed that ball. There just unfortunately wasn't any Dons there to get on the end of it. Here is Polson. On to her left. Lee Polson. Sister of David Polson, senior on the USF men's side. Again, the family in town, as you had said, Joe. They're looking for her on that wing. 
Well, she's, she's just got a sophomore. A she's got pace. a lot of pace. Yeah, she sure does. Dangerous player. If they if she could get a little bit more service, she could be really dangerous. Both both uh, both Polsons are left footed. You might uh, <laughs> you might notice. Yeah. This is Maria Gallardo. And just escapes out of the, the feet of Charisma Benitez. Nazza Marin clears away both Marin and Roy. Again, those two, the senior and the sophomore, again, trying to play balls over the top to Benitez or Vera or Polson. Rather Saldana and West Riverside team getting it a little bit better in the second half. Nothing to show for it just yet. And and Nat Gonzalez saying again to, to, to us earlier before the game started when we interviewed him. Can't cheat experience, they're young. And he was very honest about that. Here is Samantha Jennings. And Kayo, again, right there, low and on the ground. And as, as young players, as a coach trying to teach these young players, you know, I'm sure he's looking for good experiences, not just any experience. So it's important that they try to play the way he wants to play and not just over the top all the time because, you know, experiences like that, I don't know what they're going to do for you if that's not the way they are going to play in the future. Yeah, and he said he has good personalities. And he, si he said that they'll, they'll have some moments of course, both good and bad, but he, he appreciates the personalities. And then at the end of our chat, he said, we'll be fine. Even when I mentioned they had lost a game with five minutes to go in overtime and they're 0-3 and that they're young and compared to San Francisco, a 3-1 and record. But well, this all builds up to the conference. It all matters. When it comes to the conference play, it matters. And well, the West Coast Conference fortunate to have multiple teams in the NCAA tournament on the women's side because of the pedigree of the conference. But on the men's side, not as much. And and for the for UC Riverside in in their conference, it, it all comes down to that as well. Well, it's interesting uh, that he's focused on the character of his team because I think absolutely without perseverance, you know, you're not going to have a building foundation. And he's building a foundation here, and with you know that starts with perseverance and character, I believe. Um, without that, you're not going to be able to build a successful winning culture. There's Olivia Camera building out of the back. Keely Roy, nice ball for Madison, slipping that one through there. It's like Keely Roy will take a little break here. Keely Roy, Jennings, Kalena Teufel, all withdrawn. And I'd be surprised if uh, Samantha Jennings or Makaya Madison come back into this game. Unless things change drastically, I would say that they uh, may be done for the evening. Big game on Sunday. I'm sure Jeff, uh, Jim Millinder will, and Saf would like to have those players, his, his leaders, as fresh as possible. Yeah, San Francisco hosting Stanford on Sunday. Stanford 19-0 against San Francisco. Ouch. But, you know, if this is a really good game in the sense that USF did not look past Riverside. Um, this was a game that I think they could have easily looked past them and looked, looked forward to Stanford. And, and so uh, this is a really good result that Jim Millinder and his staff should be really proud of. Yeah, last and, and it's not over, don't get me wrong. Yep. It's far from over, but so far... Um, it's been a very good performance um, by the USF Dons. Just under 20 minutes to go here at Nagoesco Stadium. San Francisco hosting UC Riverside from the Big West. They have a conference tournament every year. They made the tournament the last couple of years. And again, as Nat Gonzalez said, it all kind of comes down to that, but again, Three goals conceded in the opening 13 minutes. Kind of the storyline here, back-to-back -back goals that were scored. A goal scored in the first minute of this game. Referee stops play here. Free kick going the Highlanders' way. Jim Millinder with a plethora of substitutes. You see Riverside still trying to go for it, trying to get a goal or two. 
see if they can get something going. Lots of space here for Amanda Roy to operate. It's going to be the long ball. It's a nice ball, too. It's very nice. Into the area. Nothing coming of that, though. On here for Maria Gariardo. And slipped up. This is Ashley Humphrey. Wonderful stuff. Ashley Humphrey! And caught well by the goalkeeper, Kayo. The crowd absolutely loved it from Ashley Humphrey. Well, she got a little nutmeg as she pulled the ball back through the defender's legs and then said, hey, why not? I'm going to have a go. I'm going to go for the glory. Only to have the goal, the shot, stopped by Riverside goalkeeper. Yeah, Ashley Humphrey, kind of a, a player who's quite charismatic on the field and uh, has, has a lot of, again, personality, vigor, uh, and likes to take other players on 1v1, and very much a, a good part of this San Francisco attack. The likes of Izzy Lukin and Cooper, Kalina Teufel and Jennings, and she had quite a few goals last year as well. And again, the junior who uh, can, score, can score quite a few as well on her day. Well, I think it's a... She's a fan favorite, right? Like you said, she's uh, quite animated out there with the ball. She's taking players on. Everyone likes to see that, don't they? Yeah, she had four goals last year and two assists. Her family always comes to the games, and we always chat at halftime usually as well. Just around 15 minutes or so to go here at Negoesco Stadium between these two sides. The eighth overall meeting between them. The front three, the starting front three for San Francisco has four. Yes, four. Madison with two, Jennings with one, and Kalena Teufel with another. They've all been substituted. The front three. That's pretty good production out of your front three. Sounds like Liverpool. <laughs> do you have an acronym for them yet? <laughs> I do not. And you? Don't you? I don't have one either. Here's Riverside, doing well in the corner. It's Charisma Benitez. Can she win a corner? And, and she's not able to here. Another goal kick, another substitution. Shimizu back in the game for Charisma Benitez. And now Gonzalez pushing Alexandra Hargrave further up the field. Again, Hargrave, one of the other players who scored a goal besides Polson this year for UC Riverside. Here is Samantha Kerwood-Wagner. On for Izzy Lukin, the talented senior on that left foot. Sydney Cooper looking to win it. Brought down here by Emily Pye. Her first minutes so far on the year. On here for Samantha Kerwood Wagner! Yes! Samantha Kerwood Wagner! Outstanding! And San Francisco has five! Yes! Five! Kerwood Wagner. Slotting home there for her first collegiate goal. And a fantastic through ball. And like you said, she finished that really, really well, slotting it in the far corner to make it 5-0. Really like to see how many USF Dons players are attacking. They have several threats from the left to the right to the middle. Really, really exciting times here. That was just a little bit of a breakdown of the UC... Riverside back line. Last time San Francisco scored five goals was exactly a year ago against Sacramento State.
But you know, you going going back to speaking about character, you can tell this Riverside team they have something. They are not going away. They are all moving together. Yeah, they're down 5-0, but you couldn't tell it by the way they're fighting. This is Gallardo! And Maria Gallardo, one of the best opportunities with the nicest buildup of the game, just goes over the bar. Oftentimes when you get scored upon, you ask your team, what is going to be your reaction? How are you going to react to it? Are you going to put your head down and sulk, or are you going to go out and fight? And this Riverside team, you can see them. They're all fighting for the next goal. Haven't been here at Negoesco Stadium since last November, Joe, but they certainly like playing at home five tonight. Well, they're comfortable here. Uh, they train here, and uh, it's it's a great result for them. Question is now, how are they going to rebound, and how are they going to react when Stanford comes to town? Stanford being one of the top programs year over year over year in the women's uh, national rankings. I know that Stanford plays USF. USF plays Stanford every single spring. Um, and so it's always, always a good test, to say the least. Yeah, pretty much got the whole month of September to, to warm up, to eke their way into West Coast Conference play. And then when it comes down to that, it's nine games in the West Coast Conference slate that are really going to dictate everything here for this San Francisco team. And again, four home games to go here at home. That didn't make sense. Four home games in September coming in here. And good tests, uh, a trip to Boston next weekend for San Francisco. But Stanford here at home will be an absolute big one, a big, big test, especially because Paul Radcliffe as his Stanford side humming and purring as always. Here is Sydney Cooper on for Izzy Lucan. Lucan, a couple of step overs. Izzy Lucan. Really will love watching uh, Izzy Lucan go down the left flank. If she can just improve that last touch, she's gonna get to the byline. She's gonna get plenty of crosses over this year for sure. Stanford winning the NCAA Tournament Championship in 2017. They were in the semifinals last year as well. And so they have that pedigree, as you had said, Joe. Not too many times do the men and women at the same school win the national championship in the same sport. What a thrill for Stanford. What an accomplishment. Yeah, just to give you some other perspective of Stanford, they've only missed the NCAA tournament one time since 1990. It was 97 that they last missed the tournament, which was 22 years ago, and so, that's a pretty impre impressive so record. 20, 29 times in 30 years? <laughs> yeah. Not too bad. Not bad at all. There's a standard to live up to. And San Francisco would like to, to replicate that. Again, back to the conversation of NCAA tournament, the reason why Jim Milliner was brought in here, the pedigree that he has coaching the likes of USC and LMU. And I had the chance to sit down with him earlier before the season started in a new little series that we're doing called Inside Perspective and chatting about his USC times and USC days and he gets it. He knows what it takes to get into this tournament and I know he's come close in 2015 and, and last year he had a good squad as well and that was the second best year that he's been here. But in this eighth season, things looking bright in the early going. He said also before to us, he said, we have to end strong. We have to end well. We started strong last year and then we kind of fizzled out. So that, he, that's said, right. he said, 
Joe, Charles, we have to end strong. And so that's the most important piece. And, it, and it's all about conference because uh, they had one or two hiccups and then that is enough for them to be out of the picture because the conference is so tough. So if they can, uh, you know, win seven of nine games, they have an ex excellent chance of making the playoffs. And just around eight minutes to go here at Nego Esco Stadium. Charles Wool and Joe Dugan in our first broadcast of many this year here on the women's side. Nine home games for the women. Seven on the men's side as well. We'll be right back here on Sunday for you. San Francisco versus Stanford. Last year, 5-1 in favor of Stanford as well. So, Stanford used to playing on the plush grass over there in Stanford. It'll be a different game on this fast, slick turf. So it should be interesting. Here is Izzy Lucan, closed down by Alia Feliciano and cleared away by Amanda Roy. Flag goes up there by the AR here. Offside flag raised. For a second, Riverside pushed up their players and thought they had won a free kick as well. That's right. And the assistant referee just gently showed the main official what was up. Here's Izzy Lucan. Everybody getting a touch of the ball. Jamison Ward in the back line tonight. The freshman from Seattle, Washington, playing in the Seattle Rain Academy which is, folks know, Seattle Rain involved in the NWSL as well from Kings High School. And so getting some time in the back with Emily Pye here. The experienced junior can play in the defensive midfield position. And it's really important to get all these players playing time because it's a long season, anything can happen with injuries or, or players going out of form. So it's really important that, that all players on the roster stay fit and ready to go. Well, there was Bianca Code who is knocking on the door there and her shot just, just over the bar. Bianca Code who went to Sacred Heart and part of the San Francisco Elite Academy, which you have obvious a lot of involvement with and helped start and help produce and be able to bring the game to life here in San Francisco at such a high level and giving s students of the game, youth of the game, a chance to really play at a top-notch level in the country. Absolutely, and that's what it's all about. It's great to see local products like Bianca have a opportunity to play here at Division One College Soccer and, and get a great shot off on goal just over the goalpost. Just around five minutes to go now at Nego Esco Stadium. 85th minute, San Francisco five, UC Riverside nil. Is there more? And maybe a shout for a foul or two there, but none given on the far side. Windy, 55 degrees, the fog kind of moving in to San Francisco. Three miles away from the Pacific Ocean, as always, as I always state, Nego Esco Stadium, exactly three miles down Fulton Street. Just to the south of us, south of our broadcast position here. Ball served in, cleared away here by Riverside. Valiant effort by Riverside in this second half, especially. Well, again, I, I like a lot of things I see out of Riverside they're, they're not they're not quitting they seem to be moving defensively offensively as a team and that's one thing that really breaks down pretty quickly when you're down 5-0 is the lack of cohesive movement this is Nicole Kelsey great whipped in ball looking for Cooper who's hungry to score tonight as the rest of her teammates have scored a few themselves. Well, this is an opportunity for these reserve players to really show Jim Milliner and his staff that they deserve a starting spot. And a crunching, crunching tackle right there. The tackle.
tackle by Mariah Diaz, the freshman from San Mateo, playing at that left back position. She's played in two games so far. Again, Jim Millender might be figuring out who his back line is, as you had mentioned at the top of the show, top of the program. And that left back position is kind of up for grabs. I, I, I agree. I, I think that it is an audition for a lot of these players um, to break the starting lineup. I agree with you. I don't think Jim Millender is set on uh, the back line, but uh, so far things have been working. Maybe a work in progress. Easy Lucan with a phenomenal ball here for Sydney Cooper. Can she keep possession? Yes, she can at the end line. Trying to nutmeg her opponent. And Riverside wins a throw deep in their defensive third. Just two minutes to go at Negoesco Stadium. On a foggy Thursday night in San Francisco. Oh. Awkward tackle right in front of the referee. Izzy Luca goes down. Usually when you're tackled from behind, they call a foul, but the referee let it go. Here is Bianca Code. This is Feliciano, her ball over the top. Again, looking for Alexandra Hargrave. It was just a rough start for UC Riverside here, conceding with 45 seconds into the game, and then two others back to back, mind you. In the 13th minute, within 30 seconds of each other, down 3 0 within the opening 15 minutes of this game. Better in the second half, as, as you had mentioned, but as Ashley Humphrey has clattered into there, free kick. With just around a minute to go. Referee stops the clock just on a minute. I think the yellow card is going to be coming out here to Amanda Roy, the captain of this team. Just some frustration, I would think, here for the senior. Well, the problem there is she went through the player to get the ball. I, I like her assertiveness, but uh, that was a clear foul. So one minute to go. Emily Pye to serve the ball in. A good night all around for San Francisco and coach Jim Millinder. With Stanford coming in for a tea time fixture on Sunday, five o'clock kickoff. Will Boris be here? <laughs> Is, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> Here's Emily Pye. Her service. On for Cooper. Are Goes over the head of Code. And now is he Lucan? Tack it away by Feliciano. 40 seconds to go. Here is Mariah Diaz. Nicole Kelsey still chasing possession out there. Cleared away, Kerwood Wagner. Sydney Cooper, Bianca Code, looking for Izzy Lucan. Don still playing from the right to the left, still trying to switch the ball, not stopping at anything here as we're in the 90th minute and the stadium announcer, Mike Richards, a legend here at USF, kind of counts us down. But five goals for San Francisco tonight, Joe, and a comprehensive performance the goals came in a flurry in the opening 13 minutes. Micaiah Madison, and then Samantha Jennings, and then Micaiah Madison again. And then in the second half, it was Kalena Teufel from Micaiah Madison. And then a, another goal by Samantha Kerwood Wagner, right here at Negoesco Stadium. A game that San Francisco probably is happy about for their confidence going into a Stanford matchup, but definitely going to be a very, very different match on Sunday compared to tonight. Riverside, they fought, they huffed, they puffed, and they got their act together in the second half. No goals to show for it yet. But again, Nat Gonzalez, a young team for him, and 
they're going to go through these ups and these downs in this. But for, but tonight, five five goals, Joe. It's going to be a much different game uh, on Sunday. But in terms of the recap for tonight, I thought it was a good performance. Like I said, um, they knew Riverside was going to be physical. Uh, they weren't going to be the most uh, technical team. But I thought USF did a very good job not to overlook them and, and put them away pretty soundly. Now on to Stanford. Stanford is going to be a much different game. They're going to put together five, six, seven, ten passes. They're going to be technical. They're going to be much faster. The speed of play is going to be top notch. And this is what USF is going to be uh, very, very much challenged with is keeping up with that speed of play, uh, particularly in the back, back line for USF. Yeah, certainly. So our next broadcast is going to be at 5 o'clock on Sunday right here in San Francisco as the San Francisco Dons host the Stanford Cardinal. It's going to be quite a matchup for the ages. I know San Francisco wants to continue to make a name for themselves. As Nat Gonzalez told us earlier tonight, it's a journey, and certainly it is. It's a journey, this interesting, very condensed soccer season in the fall. I know we've advocated for a longer season, but it is a journey, game after game, one game at a time. I'd like to thank everybody who has been brought of our broadcast tonight, all of our camera operators, our producer, Wu Nguyen, and the rest of our team. Appreciate you for tuning in and helping to grow the game of soccer in our country. That's what this is all about, growing the game in your own backyard, watching the game in your own backyard at the highest level that you can, and supporting it and supporting student athletes at the same time. For Joe Dugan, my name is Charles Wolin. Again, from the wonderful city by the bay, San Francisco, California, the 7x7, the University of San Francisco's Negoesco Stadium. It is San Francisco 5, UC Riverside nil. We'll see you next time. Have a great night.